So, familia, Angel Anderson here. Beautiful day here in Brooksville. No, yes, I'm wearing a jacket, but it's not super cold like it was a couple days ago. And it's not raining, which is a plus. Uh, the video you're about to watch is a presentation I did in front of marketing students at San Leo University. They asked really good questions, so enjoy the video. Hello guys. Hello. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Before I go on a rant talking about marketing, by the way, because I, I love marketing and I'm known to talk for eight hours, but by the way, what's the time limit today? 5.30. Well, yeah, 6.30 or 7. So, but I'm known to talk for eight hours and somebody at the end, at like three o'clock, they're like, Angel, we haven't had lunch today. And so, yes. Uh, my name is Angel Anderson. I'll give, you, I'll give you a little bit of background so you know where I'm coming from as far, in regards to marketing. Uh, I joined the Air Force in 1996 uh, without knowing how to speak English. And I learned to speak English on, next to aircraft, fixing and loading missiles on an aircraft. In 98, I moved from Virginia to Alaska. I started developing websites on an OPAC, and that's when I started my first company, my first legit company, because before, in listening to the Air Force, you know, I did the I cut grass, delivered pizza, newspaper, I did anything you can think of, wash cars. So in 98, I started designing websites, but my focus was mainly on e-commerce stores. So I did a lot of online sites, and I learned a lot about merchant accounts, shipping, that gave me a big head start for when the wave started. Uh, a couple of years later, around 2003, it was a huge massive wave that everybody, every young person thought that they could design a website because of wigs and places like that. But what happened was that, and you will realize this once you start executing marketing, you get to a point that you realize that the business doesn't want a website. They want a website, but they don't want a website. What they want, is the sales from the website or minimize expenses from the website. When I realized that, I started dabbling into marketing. I fell in love with marketing in 2003. I became a student. I pursued a, a public relationship and marketing degree. Eventually, I pursued my MBA. And in 2008, I stumbled upon, I started recording videos for clients. So between 98 and, to, and this point, 2008, I, the web design company grew to a point that uh, that is self-sustaining, and I still own that company. And when, when it comes to websites or hosting, you do get a lot of questions, like how, questions that you repeat frequently, like how I create an email account, how I do this in the server, how I do that. So I started recording videos for, for clients, video tutorials. And one day a doctor is like, Angel, I see you recording videos, can you do video for me? And that's how I stumbled upon doing videos. Fast forward until now, to make the, story, the long story short, now, I, any, everything that I do in marketing is surrounding video. So any content that I post, I share, the emphasis is on video. And uh, that's, why, that's what I do right now. The, the company I founded in Florida, it's called Marketing Result, is this synergy of sales and marketing. And we create uh, videos that produce results. We don't create funny ads like other people to win award. We create videos to produce results. That's a long story short. Any question for me before I move, we move on to anything else? Come on, come on. Where are you from? Puerto Rico. Why are you accent? It won't go away, my friend. <laughs> yeah. It won't. It will, it will not go away. Don't 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 try to remove yours. Uh, any anything? Else? So he asked me early, Alejandro. So my BA is from uh, Ashworth University and my MBA is from uh, University of Maryland. That was, that was the question, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I love marketing I, to the point that, like I was telling your professor, that uh, I have to find a way to shut down at night because I'm constantly thinking how I can help a client or finish a project or find an opportunity. So I'm reading a book and I want to implement the strategy for tomorrow and every day is a, is a content one. Uh, for example, Lucas asked about Facebook ads and, and, and ads period, it's something that a lot of people are focusing on, but it was a wave a couple of years ago with ads. It started with Google, Google is the king, then uh, YouTube ads, then LinkedIn started offering ads, then Facebook, Instagram, and all of them. But ads at the end of the day is just fuel to the fire. If your message is not solid, if you don't have a good product, 
if you're too attached to your product that you don't know how to communicate it properly, your Facebook ad, your ad period will fail. You only will get a bunch of views, but your a return on investment, many, whether it's your life, you want sales, or whatever it is that you want out of that ad, it will not, uh, it doesn't matter how cocky you are, or how much your, your ego is, it's not gonna work. And here's why. What is it, when you create a marketing, what is a marketing message? Because somebody asked about posting, and in this point, we're gonna transition to posting on that one. What is what's that you're looking for? What what will be the ideal message? Whether it's an ad, a paid ad, or a free or a free post, what will be the ideal message? Come on, answer. Like what what what, what is something you have to consider or keep in mind when you're sharing something online? Catch your catchy slogan. Before you select the picture and the catchy slogan. Creating value to the other person. Creating value to the other person. And how you create value to the other person? Showing something relevant. How do you know that that's something relevant? You have to no find your target market. And once you find your target market, <laughs> how do you know what they, what they want? Ask them. Oh. Liz nailed it. Businesses, business owners, doesn't matter the market, are too attached. Actually, I will say, take that back. Specifically in the fitness industry, they're too attached to their product and service, and they forget that it's not about them. It's about the person that ultimately is paying for your product and services. I can give you, I'll give you two different scenarios. I'm helping this fitness guy, and I'm like, I'm not gonna say names, but let's call him. No, I'm not gonna say name. I was gonna, I was gonna say a name. I was gonna say his name, but no, I'm not gonna say his name. Uh, and I'm like, okay, who are you trying to help? Who are you trying to reach? You know, how can you help them immediately? Blah blah blah. And we go through this, uh, to the sequence, to a questionnaire, ten questions. A couple days later, I ask him again, and he replies with the original statement. So you're the, the, most entrepreneurs and business are already hardwired to think about the sell. They put more attention how to make the sell instead of why the customer wants to buy that product and service. And that's your biggest differentiator. You need to care why they want to buy. And non-profit, I, the same question I sent, this time I got smarter, I sent a Google form, I didn't stay on the phone, I sent a Google form. After they came to my house and we spent two hours going over the content marketing strategy. They answered the question and again they're thinking about, so this uh, non-profit uh, trains kids, at-risk kids, on stop to bleed and life-saving techniques, but they are not their customers. Who are their customers? Whoever donates that money. At the end of the day, they are helping the kids. If I'm selling a kid's product, a minor, something for a minor, 10 years old, who's my customer? But that's what the businesses are failing to realize. And when you remind them, it still takes a, mo a lot of time for them to, okay, I fail, I fail, I fail, I keep sharing content online, I'm not getting any results, what is it? So when they ask me again, remember when last year I told you this and you know, share the content, like, ah, this is what you need to do, this is why, you just lost it here. That is why I don't, that's why I gave you that answer on Facebook ads. The first thing you want to know is, go out to the person that is going to get their wallet out, pull the credit card, and pay you, and ask them, you know, why do you want to buy this product? Why did you bought this product or this service? What you are looking for? And guess what you use with that information? You add it into your marketing. If they tell you, I bought this product because <coughs> after searching, for days online, you were the one that made sense. Look, my marketing will say, you know, you can spend days searching online. At the end of the day, we're, gonna, we're the only ones that are gonna make sense. You use the exact same words that the, your customer is using for your own marketing. That's gonna be your headline, that's gonna be your picture, that's gonna be your copy. That you gotta use the exact same word. If you can't interview them one-on-one -on -one in person, do a Skype call, do a, face, a FaceTime or send a survey and ask them, prepare really good questions. Um, start with three to four, but no more than 10, that you can like really find out why. Why, like I, even to the detail, like are they married? 
they have kids. Because that, at the end of the day, all those factors, they matter. Whether it's a, if I wanna, if I wanna do a video with a, a video, a, a busy CEO, I'm gonna record a video for that, find that Simone. That person is busy, probably has a family. All these factors will be on my message in order for him to say yes to me. Did I hold that make sense? Did I, go ahead, Lucas. What if you're not selling anything? So give me a scenario. You are, you want to bring awareness to something, but not selling. Like so the, selling. the first question that I ask every business owner is, what is your goal? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the first questions you want to ask as a marketing person to the business owner or the entrepreneur. It's not your goal, it's their goal. Because once you identify their goal, then you can start um, shifting or crafting the strategy. If it's awareness, the same principles apply. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Most people think that Facebook ads, Lucas, you probably would think that, because you asked for it by Facebook ads, that you create awareness with Facebook, Facebook ads. Facebook, so Facebook, you have two ones. When people search, you meet them and people are searching, people have it, how I do I, or how I do, you know, how I solve this problem. You meet them and because they are create, they initiating. With Facebook ads or any ad, you try to create them and, mm -hmm. but if they don't know you, if they don't know that they have that pain, so it's different types of uh, stages of awareness. The first stage is, it could be that uh, I'm having back pains, but I might not know that it's because I'm not stretching. Mm -hmm. If I don't know, I'm gonna continue to have back pains. So the first stage of awareness is to let them know that they have cancer, in a sense. But if, if you don't go to the doctor, you don't know that you have cancer. You found out because the doctor told you. <clears throat> if you don't go to a stretching specialist or to a doctor find out why I have lower back pain, I will probably will never find out that my hamstrings are not the way it's supposed to be. But awareness on the other, on the, to simplify, is what can you do to be in front of an audience that doesn't know you and capture their attention? Mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, what you want to start doing is more micro-influencers. That, that uh, strategy came, became popular like two years ago, but it's existed for many years. And it's anybody that has a small audience that you can siphon and, and, and a little bit of a, a little bit of people. Why? A, a, a little bit, a little bit of people. So you can do, you can do. I do a lot of interviews with other people or collaborations, and at the end of the day, a little their, his audience or her audience that didn't know me will get to f find out about me, and vice versa. Some people will cross over. Some people will not. The same. You can apply the same technique for a product that you want to create awareness. Mm -hmm. Unless you have a big budget and you just want to create ads. But if you were going to create ads, I would suggest. Like YouTube ads, mm -hmm. it will probably set up Facebook. Yeah, right. for for awareness. Yeah, yeah. Unless you, if you do have the community, or you have a la large following on Facebook, that you can do. Okay, I'm gonna target Alejandro, and I'm gonna target. The, I'm gonna do a, a copy campaign that is a uh, friends of friends, and then I'm gonna find out where Alejandro lives, and then I'm gonna do a a, a campaign based on his address. And then I'm gonna look all his groups that he likes, and then I'm gonna do a campaign against his group, like the exact same campaign. And then at the end of seven days, I will figure out which one worked the best and which one didn't work, and then I'm gonna start chopping down the block and I'm gonna start increasing the, the, the ad spends. <coughs> but I will go that route to create. Did that answer your question? Yeah, it did. Okay. Yes? So that was for raising awareness in politics when you're looking for people to sign a petition how might that marketing look a bit different because your goal isn't to purchase, but you, there's still a task you want them to do. You, your goal is to influence and change minds, right? That's, in to a get, sense. In a sense, but not always to change minds, but just to get them to actually do something when a lot of people might agree but aren't willing to do something. So recently I, I was uh, hired to do, I mean the team of a pack in Florida, and uh, it's my first time. <laughs> I actually consulted with a lot of people before I said yes because I tried to stay away from sports, and politics, and religion as much as possible. Uh, it just—it's not that you. Do, 
I don't have a problem with it. I have a problem with the people that are fanatics. You know, the, 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 the ones that they just bleed everything, whatever they're talking about. Um, so the way that we're doing in this, in this one is we're creating two different websites and we're creating a bunch of content and we're creating social media accounts to, for each of the websites of the presence and we just start dumping a lot of content to the, the people in that county. That's how we're doing it. Content. Content is king. Content is king. So what's... But you, we need... So we have every meeting, we have a lawyer, we have a researchers, and I'm just the, the, strat, the big picture strategy guy when it comes to marketing. But uh, it's just content. Just so more people in that county. It depends on the demographic. If, if your county, like where I live, what my county is a lot of old people, and uh, and while the majority of old people these days use social media and, and Facebook for the most part, uh, but they are not snappy in technology like like you. So you have to use a different approach, content. And at the end of the day, if it's if it's on the internet, it might be true, right? No, it's not true. It's true if it's on the internet. Right? <laughs> what is tact? You want to answer that one, boss? <laughs> a, a group of people with a, a similar agenda that wants to change the the face of a specific area uh, on politics. Uh, sometimes I, I, I'll be completely honest. Sometimes I I, I worry. Like I, I don't want to cross any lines. When when you become when it, when it's politics is a what I've seen is a uh, it's a hand it's a combat sport. Mm -hmm. People are going to bleed because you're gonna find something <laughs> about this politician that is dirt is is bad. They did something bad and you are morally and ethically obligated to share it. <clears throat> but then now you destroy somebody's life just because they are in a in a public forum. So you know some something to keep in mind so you don't lose your soul. Yes, ma'am. So, but what is the goal of PAC? Like you're saying transparency, but is it trying to get people to vote on a specific thing or simply Support trying to the ones that they are in line with their values okay. and their agenda and dethrone the ones that are not okay. being helping. Now, for ones that aren't necessarily like campaigns for trying to like petition things where you're getting signatures, it's not, you know, one candidate versus another. It's just here's an issue. Have you tried to do, if it's a specific issue, have you tried to post it online, gauge the interest, and if that's the case, to see how you can raise awareness of funds to boost that campaign? I'd rather not, not say, discuss the okay. particular okay. Okay. comments. But if you want later, you can send me a message, maybe I can be more specific with you. Okay. Would that work? Algorithms of, like, Ads and of like words for like Instagram. Yeah, for so like Instagram. Is that you like the so the, the the truth is, anybody that claims that they hack the algorithm, they know they're lying to you. Uh, that is, you know, when I started doing online, um, a lot of people start hacking the search engine optimization, putting white text <laughs> in the white footer, so uh, the the text the the. Google picked up those hidden words that it was what they weren't visible to the human eye. People do the same thing with hashtag on Instagram. They try to maximize them or they try to use the most popular one. But at the end of the day, what I suggest is subscribe to the company's actually blog and pay attention, close attention to what they're changing, what they're moving towards. Facebook is heavy on live streams, heavy. LinkedIn just open video more and more, like a couple of months ago, more and more and more. So everything that if you want to play with the algorithm, move to what they're using. If they open video, double down on video. If they open, LinkedIn now start, like if anybody posted on LinkedIn recently? No, you did? Did you notice that when you type, then now they suggest the hashtags at the bottom? Yeah. See, so once you notice something, take a second as a marketing person, and you're like, how this helped me, or how should I use this? And just double down more into that one. Don't try to hack it, because anything you do hack, or anything that you, uh, that you play the game, or the system, it will be only short term. So it will not, it will not be a sustainable business. <coughs> I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Does it have to do, does the algorithm have something to do with the Facebook uh, pixel tracking? 
So let, let me answer that one and let me be more in, uh, let me add a little bit to it. So the face, the pixel, you want to add the pixel. So by the way, if you're managing website and you're not adding the pixel, you're missing out on a lot of good data. You guys know about the pixel? Okay. So you want, do you want to utilize all the tools? Uh, tools. In, in, uh, the only one that has a pixel right now is Facebook. The other ones don't have, uh, and Google AdWords, that's about it. Uh, but the pixel tells you the person that visited, what page they visited, how long, and you can get very in specific. For example, if you were charging in, in punch uh, memberships, you can add a pixel to, add a, a tag to the sell page, one to the thank you page, because you assume that the person after they pay, they landed in that page. That's the only way that they will land in that page. And Facebook can also track how much you, profits and losses based on your cost of your campaign after you make that sale, and you can do that. But things that I look is uh, what pages they visited, specific articles, so I can double down on the best performance and I can fix the ones that are not performing well. I look how long they stay on the pages and if they visit and exit a page right away, so I can improve that page, the bounce rate, I wanna lower the bounce rate as much as possible. Uh, those are the things that I look, and also who's referring yeah. the traffic, specifically if I don't know the website, I go and I put it on my to-do list so I can learn more about the website, mm -hmm. how they came to, to, to this specific uh, video or page. So when Google started with the search engine optimization, I was one of those ones, and I'm not telling you not to do it because I don't think it's, <laughs> is uh, you should not do it, it's because I, I did it. I test pretty much anything you can think of on, on, on when it comes to marketing. I, bought, I, I did the exact domain match, meaning if you search for Las Vegas Optometry Care, I will buy it, lasvegasoptometrycare.com. And then by, by the way that they, the system worked back then is that they base, if, you, if your domain had those keywords in the, in, in the name, the location of the that you had on the on the site and the location of the page of the person searching, so the algorithm did a two plus two. They they present they, they put you higher in the in the search, and I played that system for a while until the update was like Panda Panda point of one point oh, and that stopped working. But you know, lucky for me, I was still renting those websites. So the, questions? How would you like that presentation? If you by any chance are looking or need or can benefit from somebody that goes to your organization, to your place of work, and talk about marketing, video marketing, anything related with marketing, reach out. I I'm your guy. I I've, I've done marketing since 2003, and I've done plenty of presentations. That are, I you can ask me anything on the spot, and I'm pretty sure that I will be able to answer. Anyway, I hope you're having a fantastic day. And remember, if you need somebody to talk about marketing in your organization, reach out. I help you out. Talk soon.